Okay, great. So, so much for uh, word independence. So that didn't go very far. So let's see what else. Uh, what else we can do? Uh, again, our set of assumptions. Another assumption that people don't like is uh, absence or presence of words. So here we're basically saying we can't model the word frequency. So let's see if we can relax that assumption. Um, now you want to model term frequency, and the reason you want to is because it is useful. Right? So uh, when the word occurs multiple times in a document, uh, that indicates that that document is about that term. So we want, we, empirically, we want uh, it is useful, and we want to be able to uh, make use of it. Okay, so <clears throat> so we have to do that, and uh, the way to do that is you take your first assumption and you change it. So instead of assuming that dw is a Bernoulli variable, zero or one occurs or doesn't occur. Uh, now we can model the counts. So dw is going to be the number of times that the word w occurs in uh, document D. And then uh, we have to estimate these probabilities. Probability that, uh, so dw and r, this means that a certain word w, like Obama, is going to occur x number of times in the relevant, uh, in, in a randomly picked relevant document or in, in a randomly picked non-relevant document. <clears throat> So that's what this probability is going to mean now. It's not just occurrence and non-occurrence. It's uh, what's the probability that occurs that many times. Um, so how do we estimate that probability? Well, the naive way to do it is would be to, ask, uh, to come up with a separate parameter for each count. Right? So we have, uh, we have a parameter for the word occurring zero times. We have a parameter for the word occurring one time, two times, three times, and so on. Uh, just like in the Bernoulli model, we had a parameter for the word occurring once and the word occurring zero times. Uh, so you could do that. Uh, that is naive and not very nice. And there are two reasons why that's the case. First of all, frequencies can be fairly large. So you're talking about lots of parameters for each word. And you're going to need to estimate uh, all of them. And that's obviously complicated. Uh, and another thing is, if you estimate them all independently of each other, if each probability is a separate parameter, then you're not going to have any smoothness in the estimates. So for example, you could have totally different estimates for the probability that dw is 5 and dw is 6. And what you want to do is you want them to be relatively close to each other because 5 occurrences and 6 occurrences, well, that's a similar kind of event. So, so you want something that preserves smoothness. And you can't do that if you have separate parameter. So uh, the solution is to assume a parametric form for the probabilities over the frequencies. And uh, one assumption that is popular is to, to assume that the frequencies follow uh, a Poisson distribution. So Poisson distribution looks kind of like that. Um, and the probability for a particular count is just given by that equation, right? So uh, you have the count factorial in the denominator, and then uh, a parameter mu of w raised to the count e to the minus mu of w. So what is mu of w? Mu of w is your average frequency of the word across a bunch of documents, across the whole population. So that's the expected frequency. So if you didn't see the document, what would be your expectation for how many times the word and occurred in that document? And that's your mu of w. Okay. So the nice thing about this is you have a single parameter for each word. Uh, and that's very much like what we had in the binary model. In the, minor, in the binary model, we had pw, the probability that a word occurs, and now we have mu of w, the expected frequency. <clears throat> uh, so that's good, and it's nice, and it's easy to estimate. Uh, the problem is uh, Poisson by itself is a relatively poor fit to uh, observations. And if you think back to, I think, the second lecture that we had in this course, remember when we talked about the laws of text, we said that words are bursty, they're contagious. Once you see a certain occurrence of the word, artwork, you're much more likely to see artworks again, just because, just because that's, how, that's how humans talk. That's how we write things. Yeah? How do we pick which, uh, which formula we like on, or does the guy see it, or does it like any bajillion other distributions? Okay, you're right. So the question is why Poisson versus Gaussian versus other distributions? So uh, for this particular case, um, think about what, thing, what, what are you modeling? You're modeling frequencies. So could you use a Gaussian? So a Gaussian is not a distribution over integers. A Gaussian has a positive probability for minus 1. Can you have minus 1 occurrences of artwork in a document? You can't. Right? You, you only have positive integers. So uh, you take a family of distributions that models positive integers. Poisson is one of them. It's not the only one. 
robots. Uh, the reason Poisson is used, it's particularly simple and nice to play with. It's just like the Gaussian is nice to play with for real numbers. Poisson is nice and easy to play with for, for integers. So it's sort of your default uh, thing. Uh, uh, but it doesn't model the bursty nature of words, right? It, it, the, the tail is not long enough. That's, that's what it means. It underestimates uh, the tail. Um, 